Hello and good evening, everyone. Welcome to the evening edition of the Humans to Mars Summit 2020. We have had an incredible day, and we're so glad that you're all here to join us for our final panel of the evening, and it's Influencing Mars. So what are we going to be talking about? We're going to be talking about all kinds of amazing things, and uh, it's really going to be around um, the idea that you can have a voice in the science industry and social media can kind of be your way in. And everyone here has an incredible story to share. They come from all different backgrounds. They do different things from engineers, science communicators, uh, future Mars walker, um, and the space geologist, podcaster. Um, we're, we're touching on everything here and I'm really excited to bring on our panel today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start and we're going to go to my Hey, there we go. I got it right the first time. To my left, and uh, we're going to start with Deanna. Deanna Alcindi, give us a quick intro to who you are, your platform, and kind of what you do. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Deanna Alcindi. I am a propulsion engineer and the Arabian Stargazer. I founded the Arabian Stargazer on Instagram uh, in 2018, where I try to influence people about space and science communication bilingually in Arabic and English. So if you guys... Um, after the after this um, this awesome webcast with all these awesome people, uh, you can follow me on the Arabian Stargazer, and we can continue the conversation there. Most excellent. Next, we're going to go to Athena Brandsberger, aka Astro Athens. Athena, tell everybody hello. Where you come from? What you do? Hello, everyone. I am coming from New York. I'm a New Yorker, um, and I am a science communicator specializing in astrophysics. Um, I created my platform known as Astro Athens and do everything from DIY science experiments to kind of understand what's happening in our cosmos um, to attending rocket launches and bringing you guys behind the scenes uh, look of what it's like to actually launch a rocket into space. And um, yeah, you can follow me on Astro Athens. I've also got a website, astroathens.com, and I'll see you guys on there. <laughs> Awesome and wonderful haircut, looking amazing. You. Um, you may have watched the Super Bowl earlier this year and you probably saw the next face. So um, the young, brilliant, wonderful Alyssa Carson. Alyssa, tell us a little bit about yourself for the three people that don't know who you are, like everybody else on this panel and all the cool things that you do. <laughs> yeah, um, basically just a Louisiana native and I've kind of always been interested in space and the idea of becoming an astronaut one day. And so I kind of took that and ran with it. Um, so just kind of been building a resume and and trying to do as much as I can to eventually apply to the astronaut selection process in the future. Um, so I'm currently studying astrobiology and going to eventually become officially an astrobiologist, but at the time doing citizen science research, uh, inspiring other kids to follow their own dreams and getting as involved as I can in the space and science community and inspiring other kids to also get involved because space is just so cool. So you might as well. <laughs> Couldn't agree more. Uh so next up, let's go to Kenny Harris the second, um, doing amazing, wonderful things. Found him recently on uh, on Instagram, and uh, we became f uh, quick friends last night on a phone call. Uh, and I know that a couple yeah. people out there today that were on the summit were a couple of your mentors. So uh, I know you had to be smiling today. So Kenny, oh, yeah. welcome. Let us know a little oh, bit about yeah, yourself. Definitely. <laughs> definitely. Thanks so much for having me, guys. My name is uh, Kenneth Harris. Go by Kenny F. Harris on social media platforms. I've been working. Um, on projects at NASA Goddard Space Flight Center here in Maryland for the past 12 years. I've actually done six different missions, um, anywhere from, you know, uh, MMS, GPM to James Webb Space Telescope. So some really cool, interesting missions. I currently uh, advise on a project called Hermes for the Lunar Gateway, which is part of the Artemis program. So really happy to be here, really happy to be with this great panel as well. And we are so glad to have you. And next we're going to go with Karina Perez. Karina does all kinds of great things, everything from she used to be a cosplayer and used to go to Comic-Cons <laughs> to the space industry now, and she puts on some really amazing events. Uh, Karina, too, just got her hair done. It's another color, and that's, that's been her thing this, this spring and summer, as it has been for many of us. I'm getting ready to shave my head because, you know, stress. Uh, so, Karina, give us a real quick intro to who you are and what you do. Yeah, so um, my name is Karina, and when I'm stressed, I decide to change my hair color. Uh, so that's been this whole quarantine. Um, but so I work with the Aerospace Industry Association doing strategic partnerships and uh, just in general strategic uh, initiatives to get people to know our industry. So trying to reach audiences that don't necessarily know about us. Uh, that includes going to South by Southwest, Comic-Cons and a bunch of other things to be able to bring in audiences who already like nerdy things 
and into the space world. Uh, recently, we partner with Private Division, who are the developers and uh, publishers of Kerbal Space Program to do a Kerbal Space Program competition for some young rocketeers. So that's kind of the, the breadth of my work, just trying to get more people involved in our industry and finding new and exciting ways to get them in. Um, and so, yeah, if you're interested in learning more of what, what I do or some of the initiatives, you can just find me uh, with at Karina in Space. <laughs> Wonderful, wonderful to have you. And as we continue on, the next one up is uh, Raquel Nuno. Uh, congratulations, by the way. you got a little one at home. If everybody's been watching on Instagram, she's been sharing her uber adorable baby. Um, nobody's surprised between you and Derek. You both are obnoxiously handsome. We appreciate that. Making <laughs> make me feel bad. Uh, but you're incredible. We're glad to have you on. Talk to us a little bit about what it is you study, your platform, and uh, all the cool things you do. Yeah, thank you so much for having me, Ron. Uh, yeah, I'm Raquel. I'm a PhD student at UCLA and I study planetary geology. Uh, I'm involved in a couple of NASA missions, so that's really exciting. And I think the reason I started um, doing outreach through social media was because when I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do with my life, I knew I liked space, but I didn't know all the jobs available to me out there. And so I didn't know that planetary science was a thing. And so I wanted to tell other people about this super exciting field that you can be a part of um, that is so interdisciplinary. If you're like me, you really like different things. Uh, planetary science is super exciting. And so that's what I wanted to um, to bring to people. And also, um, so people know what a scientist does, what does a PhD student does, and, and what does a mom who's a scientist do as well. Wonderful, wonderful. And uh, last up is Jake Robbins, who has uh, an absolutely incredible podcast called We Martians Podcast. Um, and he and I uh, both do podcasts. And, and that's one of the reasons I love having him on is he's got one of the other most popular ones about uh, about Mars. Uh, so how can we not have him on too? And you're going to have a very unique view that you'll get to share with us a little bit later about how science communication podcasting is different than, than other science communication, but give us a breakdown of what you do, how you got into this and uh, how I can find your address to come steal your entire background. Cause it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, uh, thanks so much for having me. And uh, I gotta say, it's a really difficult to follow all the amazing people on this panel, but uh, yeah, I'm i uh, I'm basically a space. Nobody. I have no space background at all. I'm not a scientist. I'm not an engineer, but I fell in love with space and I just wanted to be a part of it. And uh, the one thing I realized I was good at was talking into a microphone. And so um, that's what I decided to do. Uh, so I do a, a podcast called We Martians and another one called Off Nominal. And, you know, basically we bring on scientists, engineers, communicators, anyone really interesting who has a good story to tell. And we just try and uh, really unpack it. So I love getting deep into the details. And like I said, we'll talk about why podcasting is cool. But uh, one of the reasons you can really kind of unpack something really, really well. And uh, it's been a lot of fun. So I am just jazzed to be here and uh, talk more about how social media connects podcasting to the rest of the world. Love it, love it. So, I mean, let's start off the first thing. This is about influencing Mars and getting people interested in, in the space community and how those things happen. So let's talk a little bit to each one of you about how you created your platforms and what it is you do. Diana, I'll go with you first. Um, you went from almost zero to 100,000 followers in around a year, um, you know, because of and this is something that's really important to talk about um, is reaching out to an entirely different community. One of my favorite stories that you told me was there's not a word for rocket. It's peaceful missile uh, in the Arabic mm -hmm. language. And I was actually talking to Mac, uh, Macaulay the other night on my show and he was talking about a, a, what an event that he did with you. And um, I just love that, you know, getting out there and reaching to a whole new audience and uh, you do a wonderful job of it. So tell us a little bit about the platform and how you crafted it and how you were so successful so quickly. Yeah, I think me making it successful wasn't the perfect recipe uh, of creating a public platform on Instagram about space. I believe that that region was just so thirsty for having someone who talks about space and communicate about space and just have a face to it. Um, so in 2018, I was working at Virgin Orbit. It was a year after I graduated college and I just didn't feel really satisfied to have just you know building rockets for a living. Uh, it was an awesome job, but still I, I wanted to do more and serve my community and, and provide th those resources that I didn't have when I was a student in college. So I created the Arabian Stargazer and I wanted to tar target it specifically to the Middle Eastern region because it wasn't available. I searched YouTube, I searched Instagram, Facebook to see someone who was speaking about space, uh, commu science communication and space exploration specifically in Arabic. 
and the material there was very boring and very dry and no student or kid will sit down and listen to to whatever material that was online so i created the arabian stargazer and started with short a bilingual post on why do we go to space i created a series on how space exploration helped us here on earth i started sharing tips on what i actually used when i was in college when i wanted to pick a major and i didn't really know what available jobs there is out there and um, my my ultimate mission was to create space camps all across the Middle East, just like we have here in America and Europe and the UK. Um, a bunch of kids can go and learn a, a lot of skill sets about science that you don't necessarily learn in school or in your university or just in your career in, um, in general. So I wanted to test the water, created the Arabian Stargazer, started speaking Arabic um, in my own Iraqi slang because I'm originally from Iraq. Um, I have an accent, I've been here for 11 years only, and people started being interested. So I knew that there is an audience out there, and if I continue consistently share these resources and opportunities, um, a lot of people are going to be interested. So that's my really short version of my story. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a wonderful story, and you've done amazing work, and we're so glad to have you on here to talk about it tonight. And uh, so, you know, of course, next up, we got to go to uh, Athena. Athena, you have, um, we, I think you were the one of the first science communicators to take advantage of TikTok. Not only do you have you had a YouTube channel and Instagram and all the stuff that you and I have done together, but seriously, this is important because you started something and then a lot of other people followed with that and you've done a wonderful job with it. You know, now Emily Calandrelli's on there. She's killing it. And a lot of others, probably some people that are on here too, but what made you say this is a new one and this is something that I should hop onto and take advantage of. Is it the place to be right now? Other than the fact they're still China stealing all your information. Um, you know, is that, <laughs> that was going to be my, joke. but seriously though, uh, let's talk a little bit about that and what you, how you decided to take advantage of this, uh, this new and exciting platform that everybody is on. Yeah, um, TikTok is such an interesting thing in itself. Just that app alone, um, it, the the demographic and the age target is so different than like Instagram, YouTube. Um, although YouTube and Instagram also have quite a wide range, TikTok was like very specifically targeted to like Gen Z, like super duper young, and it's also very international, which I thought was pretty awesome. And I thought, okay, if I can relay a concept in astrophysics in a 60 second video, then that means that I'm fully being able to do what I set out to do, which is communicate science, something that can be a very complicated subject like cosmology um, in a relatively digestible way. And TikTok allows for that and also allows for creativity. And um, that's what I loved so much about it because I, I mean, before I went into astrophysics, I was an artist my whole life. Um, I was an actor, I went into painting, I went into sculpture, I've always loved art. And so co combining art and science, we all know how important that is. And TikTok offered this ability to be able to allow for young people to be their own video editors and create their own concepts. Maybe it's a dance competition, maybe it's a vocal competition, but what I decided to do is instead make it in like a scientific way. And that just was so awesome. I mean, it was just so extraordinary to see so many students coming to me saying, wow, I did this DIY experiment that you showed on like a gravity bowl for extra credit in my class. And it helped so much with my science class. Like, thank you. And so I became devoted to making extra credit for your teachers or for your classes. And um, that was just like, it was just such an awesome thing. And now, um, yeah, it's like rapidly grown. And I think so many people are on there now and it's become so much more of an educational platform which before it was more so just like kind of for like entertainment of dance competitions, which is awesome, or like voiceovers, which is like pretty fun. Um, but now we see it having this whole different role of, of science. And um, I think that that's just so powerful. So as far as where we're standing right now, yeah, it's possible that by mid-September it might completely be gone if it's not bought out by a US company. Um, but you know, we see now Instagram has Instagram Reels, but I think that there's still something super special from that and the the people that I got to speak to through there and connect with um, that forever uh, served its purpose, even if it's gone after this. 
Well, I mean, it, it's still wonderful that you were able to capitalize on it and do some really wonderful things and, and teach a whole different demographic about it. You know, it is a Gen Z platform, mm -hmm. except for the occasional old guy like me on there. Like, oh, I'm going to do funny. I want to do funny stuff and talk like Carmen while I'm talking about space, guys. And, uh, you know, so there's people that do silly stuff like that. But, um, you know, what you do is wonderful. And it's great how you're reaching out and connecting with people on that platform. Um, so, Raquel, we'll go to you next. Uh, I can't think of any other geologist talking about space on Instagram and uh, you know, and you've got, I mean, your experiences are all over the place from being behind the scene, um, working with your partner to the stuff that you do um, and then the mix and then also being a mom. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about the platform. When did it really start to take off for you and what is it about what you do that you feel connected with people? Yeah. Um, I think it started taking off. I was on a, on a podcast, um, called ologies. And, um, I think that, um, yeah, but I've been, I've been on, on Instagram, I think it's about seven or eight years. Um, just posting about my life. And then I realized that people were actually just really interested in, in the science and the behind the scenes of what, what does a scientist do? What, what, um, what what is it really like? Um, and that's that's when the platform took off. And once I fully embraced the the desire that people had to learn, I I just I leaned into that and and started putting out more educational content. Um, I think um, what's really really powerful about social media is as a as a recruiting tool. I've done a few NASA socials, and I don't know if people are aware of what NASA social is. Is NASA invites people to come out to events to get behind the scenes of what's happening at NASA. And uh, they don't just ask for big influence to come out. You can have a small audience, but as long as you have like a, you're, you're helping your community, you can come out and get a behind the scenes uh, view of what NASA does. And um, it's so exciting. That is such a good um, strategy that they're doing. And I want, I, I want my university to do, to start doing things like that because at UCLA, we have a lot of, we're doing really, really exciting space research, but I feel like people don't know about it because we're not putting out content. We're not telling people about it. And uh, so that's, that's what I hope to do. I, you know, I want to, I want people to know the exciting work that we're doing in, in my lab and in my department. Um, so, so yeah, that's, that's, that's what I do. That's how I come, come at it. And uh, so we're going to, we're going to bring uh, Kenny back in here. Kenny, let's talk a little bit about the things that you do and that you love, especially with your platform. Um, Education is a really big deal to you. And I know it's something that you and I talked about last night. I'm sure it's going to be even more important here soon. You got the little one on the way. Um, yeah, so yeah. let's talk a little bit about how you were inspired. Some of the people that you've got to work with, um, you know, formerly at uh, NASA and uh, yeah. you got a new position, right? Let's talk a little yeah. bit about that and yeah. what it is you do and, um, how how building this platform and speaking to the to students and teachers and people all around the world how you kind of uh, how you got into that yeah so um i never really had a plan to uh build an instagram platform in all honesty it was just i was just going to work in NASA every day and then i decided hey i'll put some stuff on my instagram what i'm actually doing um and then i just you know me starting an internship at such a young age made me really want to give back to the community in some way so I decided, I decided to first volunteer in my local high school, just, hey, I'll come um, talk to your students just about STEM, STEAM, different things of that regard, um, which evolved into going, you know, back to my alma maters, uh, which evolved into me, you know, speaking at conferences and things like that. And it's just kind of a gradual, a gradual uh, ladder upwards. Um, in terms of the new position, uh, like I said, uh, my most recent position, I worked on JPSS. I was a database lead for them. Now I work um, or space asset protection. So, you know, securing satellites from cyber threats and, and uh, physical threats as well. And that's, um, that's, that's, that's really, really interesting, really fun. Can't get into a lot of details of it, but it, it's, it's actually a really cool world. Um, something that I'm definitely new to because my heart was really in that integration, the mechanical, um, you know, fabrication, things of that nature, because that's what I did on James Webb was actually building the satellite. So, all very cool stuff. Um, and I just feel it's my duty to go back and talk to different students about uh, those experiences. It's And it's a wonderful platform that you have. You're doing some uh, really incredible things. So um, because I went a little bit out of order here, uh, I think I got to go back to Alyssa. Um, so Alyssa, you're 
uh, you're three years old and say, Dad, I want to go to Mars. And uh, then, you know, 19, you're in a Super Bowl commercial and you've been all over the place. You're inspiring children all over the world. Um, I mean, you're inspiring plenty of adults, too. And you've got this dream to go to Mars and you're certainly working pretty hard on it. Um, so tell us a little bit about this platform and how things like what happened when it first started happening? Was it immediate or um, was it something in particular that you found about creating this platform and it just went? Yeah, um, totally. I mean, definitely when starting the whole I guess, social media platform, there was honestly no intention of it kind of becoming a big thing or being important whatsoever. Um, honestly, me and my dad just kind of po started posting uh, stuff on social media, honestly, just to keep track of like pictures of things that we were doing, because obviously it was really awesome because I was pursuing stuff I was interested in, but also, you know, I was being able to hang out with my dad. And so we were both just kind of just posting things to kind of keep track of it. And then all of a sudden people started following that, uh, which was kind of pretty bizarre, but it has been really amazing to be able to communicate and inspire kids all over the world and have that that ability to actually connect to them on a deeper level and you know see so many kids who are actually interested in pursuing a space job or pursuing some sort of stem career or space career or even becoming astronauts as well so it has been really amazing to kind of see all of that happen and actually being able to interact with them and really build up I guess more of a platform um, that is able to interact with everything so honestly I do think that I kind of benefited um, for the better and being able to just communicate with so many people all over the world but yeah honestly from the beginning it's always been weird that people were actually interested in the content so. and uh you, you've done such a wonderful job with getting it out there and inspiring so many people and it's uh it's always cool uh every time i see there's a new magazine around i'm like oh we were at project possum together and we were the only two people still doing homework there's the old like one of the oldest people there and then there's her and by the way i was doing pre-calculus and she was doing calculus-based physics and i'm like that's where I'm at in this right now. So uh, it's it's a great memory. Never too late. It's, uh, it's been amazing to continue to see. I mean, is it Nike? You have like a there's like a, a Nike or Reebok, and there's like there's something with yoga, and there's a Super Bowl commercial. It's just it's everything. It's nuts. <laughs> Always stuff. <laughs> Always stuff happening. Always going. Uh, so Karina, let's go to you. You do a whole lot with um, different programs. You work with a bunch of different organizations, putting on events, and of course, you've been there and done that before. You know, uh, cosplaying, and now as a science communicator, um, were you able to kind of take the skills that you had from being around kind of the entertainment industry and utilize that? Was it a totally different animal? So for me, as a DJ, a lot of this it turned out like transferred over. Did you find that, or was it just a whole new ball game? So it happened kind of unintentionally. I was more of just wanting to make initiatives and things for people to be interested. And I don't know where, I think because of all the cosplay and the entertainment in me, I just started to talk more and more and more. And next thing I knew I was like on panels. And next thing I knew I was at South by Southwest representing industry. And it was a very like easy transition because it was just talking about things that I'm passionate about. It was just like, I love comics. And now it's like, I love space. And there's the occasional times where they both mix and the occasional time where I can say, oh, I love Star Trek. And here's how that relates to international relations. And then people can understand that. So it was actually super easy to translate a lot of what I learned from entertainment and from cosplay and from comic books. And also a lot of the, I will say the audiences do overlap. Uh, the audiences tend to be very passionate about things and they tend to just care a lot. And I think everyone here would agree that their audiences tend to just be in love with the subject. And it's the same thing with any sort of comic or nerdy related thing. It's everyone just loves what they do. So when they see someone who's passionate about it, they just kind of gravitate towards it. And that's kind of how I ended up even being like, any sort of spokesperson for the organization that I work for is just because I was the nerd who wouldn't shut up because I loved what I was doing. And uh, I love the way that you've been able to implement those things. And uh, actually, I want to touch on uh, some stuff that you do again real quick, too, is putting events together, especially evening events. Like you've done, I know that you've done some cool stuff. I've not been able to make it to any of them yet. Um, I'm normally, you know, not sleeping, uh, but I definitely want to go to on one of these days. So I definitely want to pick your brain about that. Um, you know, putting stuff together for the space industry that is also cool and interesting. And um, I mean, really anybody would want to go to it. And uh, I've seen a few of those that you've done. So whenever you're putting those things together, one is social, something that is, that is a powerful thing for you, or you just know everybody and say, you're going to be here because it's a cool thing. <laughs> 
<laughs> I think honestly, like in any event, especially in this industry, it's just put together the platform and people will come because like I said, everyone just loves it. Uh, and so, for example, one thing that I did recently was more of an off the record conversation with uh, young professionals and then the the Air and Space Museum like wanted to work with us and then just things just happen and things kind of naturally, if you give people the, hey, let's do this, they automatically say, yes, tell me when, because I love this. <laughs> so Ron, just, you know, just stay awake a little longer. <laughs> Just sleep just a little less and you'll be fine. Uh, so, Jake, let's go to you next. Um, yeah, yours is a is a different kind of platform than a lot of people are doing. And by the way, uh, everybody is com complimenting Raquel's uh, plant that's in the background that is Fake. not real. <laughs> it's like it's, it's not real it's a conspiracy uh but no we're <laughs> everybody's cracking up and we've got the private chat going on and I'll, we're all kind of giggling about it because people are noticing that and they're so they're so impressed by the uh the plant that's part of a uh, part of kind of like the set there <laughs> uh but jake let's talk a little bit about you know podcasting uh it's a little bit different it's not just um, you know, sharing your own story and sharing other people's stories. You know, how do you, one, how do you get started with it? And then two, how did you really start collecting the people that you speak to, to highlight uh, our favorite subject here, Mars? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, I think everyone on this panel will probably understand this, this story, but it's, a, it's a slow, a slow burn, right? You just start and it's kind of, you build a, a network one person at a time. So uh in terms of you know logistics, it's pretty easy to start a podcast. You can just go buy a microphone at whatever Best Buy or something, and uh, uh, you know log in your computer and you're good to go. You can just start talking. That's a podcast at its at its root, right? Um, I, early on, it was a lot of just cold calls. It was just like reaching out to people on Twitter. Twitter was uh, fantastic for my early networking and still is today. Um, you just you know finding people that were. Uh, if they're on Twitter talking about their work, then you know they're already kind of interested in outreach. And so it's kind of a, a way you can find a, a good subset of the of the uh, industry and they want to talk about their work. And so um, I just had some really kind people early on that took a chance on me and, you know, agreed to be on a podcast that had 15 listeners or whatever it was early on. Uh, and then you just kind of go from there and you meet people and they introduce you to more people and, and then you're doing lots of cool stuff. So, um, you know, this year I was able to interview the NASA administrator, uh, which is a, a pretty good get for a podcast. And, and, uh, uh that's kind of how you do it. But like I said, it's one person at a time, right? You just kind of go and it's been five years and, and here we are. So. And, uh, that, that's something I kind of want to echo a little bit too, is that, you know, some years ago when I was doing my first interviews that had a couple hundred views, we've got like, I don't know, a thousand people total watching this now between this, the stream, and then also what's going into Big Marker, our, our friends that are over there that um, we love you all for being part of the Humans to Mars Summit. But um, Fraser Kane was like, just keep showing up. Eventually, people are going to notice. Um, you know, I have my original interview with Neil deGrasse Tyson still only has like 150 views on it. You yeah. know, so, I mean, even when you get big names, that's not going to be the only thing. You got to figure out all the stuff for YouTube. You got to figure out all the yeah. stuff for podcasts and SEO and all that stuff that makes you just want to scream into the black darkness. Uh, but as you start to figure these things out, they start to connect. And, um, you know, I think that's one of the beautiful things about it is that you just keep showing up and eventually things happen. So don't think it's going to happen overnight. But if you love this and you have the passion like every one of the panelists here have tonight, it's you're going to find a way. You're going to find whatever it is that's your voice. Um, so that's actually something I want to talk a, a little bit about was uh, is finding your voice and standing out from a crowd and kind of how you did that. So, um, Diana, I'll go to you first. How did you do that? in particular was it originally hey i want to do the arabian stargazer it's going to be bi bilingual i want to get to different people or did it start out as something different well i did touch base on this a little bit earlier that it it was something new we we really didn't have someone who's talking about space and the space industry in arabic especially a young woman who is a recent immigrant to the states and and got to work with all these cool companies it has nothing to do with being really smart because um, I wasn't really smart in school and still not, but consistency is really the key. So when I started the the Arabian Stargazer, uh, I saw that there was a gap. There's a gap in this big internet that we have. We have a bunch of really cool science communicators who are speaking different languages like English, Spanish, but we really didn't have that in Arabic. So the, the unique voice I think was um, 
was the key on why this kind of blew up really early on. Uh, and I hope it's continue reaching many more people. I don't think uh, the number of followers you have is a, a metric of how successful you are. It is how many people you've really affected and the testimony that you get. If someone messages me and says, hey, your page really helped me, I am in Stanford right now, which I do mention this story in every single podcast or webcast I do, that is awesome. It really excites me that people are finding uh, enough resources that they didn't necessarily have before just because I am posting and sharing my my story. So if you are, someone asked here on um, on the comments, if you do have something that you want to share with the world and you want to use social media and in, in sharing that knowledge and experiences and advice that you have, I do recommend that you find something unique about what you're trying to say. Is it going to be bilingually speaking, um, you're writing and writing everything, reading and writing everything, in a different language, or are you going to be doing, um, you know, bringing more people in from the industry so more people are interested in speaking with these big names? It really depends on what's really not available and not out there, and you try to bring in your story uh, with with that unique method. Sorry for that, but Alyssa just private messages like me, me acting normal as if I'm not playing tug of war with my dog under the table and I'm the only one that can see her. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I've noticed it the entire time and I'm just cracking up. She's like, she told on herself and I'm just sitting here. I'm just giggling every time I see it. I knew exactly. I saw you let the dog in. So I knew that you were going to be playing with the dog. So that one just cracks me up and that, that makes me happy. So um, Athena, we're going to go to you next. International model science communicator. Put them together, and I love. There's this kind of the mix of where it's like super glamour on the cover of Vogue or one of those amazing fashion magazines that a dude doesn't read. Um, probably should probably learn some stuff, right? Might have, uh, you know, might have better luck. But um, you decide to mix those things together, and then we see you on a TV show, and your hair's up, and you got the glasses on. Like, whenever we're talking about black holes, and it's just these. It's it's the same side. Uh, it's it's two sides of the same coin. So how did you mix those together? What made you say I can do both? Because it's it's you. It's Carly uh, Carly Klaus. There's a few different people that are doing that, but you were the first, or one of the first, or possibly the first. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I definitely vote for sure reading Vogue. I definitely think that's a great thing to do. I know lots of guys that read Vogue. Um, but yeah, Carly Claus, she is such an inspiration. She teaches girls how to code, which is awesome. And um, I don't know so much about any other like fashion models that are um, advocates for STEM. But for me, it started because while I was doing research at the Hayden Planetarium in protoplanetary disks, so early planet formations, um, and planetary system formations is when I got scouted for America's Next Top Model and was like, hmm, maybe I should give this a shot. And, you know, as I mentioned earlier, I've always been an artist. I decided maybe I can try to pursue both. And um, I didn't go forward with the show, but I decided to go full fledged into the fashion industry. And I learned something quite magical is that there's so many people in all these other industries that have a passion for science that have a curiosity of just knowing what else is out there. I mean, it's kind of just an innate human ability, a human human curiosity. And so that's when I decided that while like pursuing modeling overseas, whether it was in another country or it was in New York, I decided I wanna start actually creating content around space again. And, but this time it's gonna be in the makeup chair. It's gonna be with a hairdresser. It's gonna be on set. I'm gonna stop the shoot to watch a rocket launch, which I did for the Ariane 5 launch um, VA252, which was back in uh, December, I believe. And um, it's extraordinary. And I think that that's what really kind of brought me to where I am today with, um, I saw a comment that came through from the audience that said it's about finding a niche from Sh uh, Steve Schwarmer. And that's so true. And um, you know, the thing is I wanna reach more people. And yeah, there's the comment. And um, the thing is sometimes we're so focused, I think on kind of that niche where science is a niche but people who love science are always gonna love science. It's about people that maybe aren't in the science industry that love science, but maybe were turned off to it at a young age because they didn't do good in class or whatever it is. And those are the people that I really think it's important to advocate to, to advocate space exploration to, and to um, share the message of um, space and science. And so that's really what kind of brought me to where I am today. And um, honestly, it's it's so epic. Like, I mean, just 
like, oh my gosh, it's just so awesome. Literally, like I said, being on set and like, I'll just mention that I, I studied astrophysics and I don't even have to talk the rest of the time. Everyone is boasting about how much they love galaxy collisions and they watch Cosmos and like all this other stuff. And I'm like, wow, like Cosmos, these are other models. That? This is a photographer, <laughs> <laughs> right? What's well, Cosmos? <laughs> but, you know, and so it's it's quite extraordinary because you really start to see, I think that um, that connectivity of, of humanity and kind of our collective and so um, that's what really brought me into doing what I do today. So whether it is sharing, a, a, you know, a modeling photo from um, New York Fashion Week, or it's like actually New York Fashion Week had Sophia Artificial Intelligence, um, Sophia the AI. Yeah. She was a model um, during a show, which was really awesome. And I got to meet her, and I broke down crying. But it was so awesome. And um, <laughs> Cosmos is the show you drink. I just saw that in a private chat. <laughs> yeah, or Cosmos like the show that started by Carl Sagan and then hosted <laughs> by Neil deGrasse Tyson. <laughs> Um, so yeah, there's just so many other industries out there. I think that are just so intertwined with science. And, uh, so while, while we're on it, uh, one of the cool things you've been doing recently, and for those that maybe don't know about it, um, a lot of people have seen the live streams that SpaceX does for launches, but you work with Ariane and it's a talk show for launches. It is like the coolest looking thing ever. I know that you all had to suspend it for now, but you, Sarah Crutus and a group of other incredible science communicators, journalists, and congratulations, Sarah, if you're watching, saw that the new book's out. Um, but it's super cool to do that. So you kind of get to be the person out in the field sometimes, and then sometimes you're sitting on it. They're talking to DJs and about music. It's a show show. It's not just, I mean, don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong at all with what SpaceX does. It just seems like it's just a whole different production level and it's awesome. So how did you get involved with that? And can you tell us a little bit of the behind the scenes of this really cool thing that are doing, doing, there we yeah. go. Wait, there we go. Okay. Um, yeah, the, the final countdown, um, a show started by Ariane Group, and it exactly what you said. It was about bringing in artists, musicians, um, and also, of course, scientists, people that are working on you know the journey of of building a moon base, building a Mars base, but then also those who are creating music around space um, or other things. And so, yeah, the, the final countdown. Um, it's just super awesome and. Um, uh, it, it actually started through just an email that I got. I got this email, um, it was from a French uh, production company. And I was like, whoa, like this is about to be, you know, the, the adventure of a lifetime. And, you know, obviously with COVID, a lot of things were, were put on hold. But, um, you know, it definitely is still something so exciting that I think a lot of live streams are going to start doing more of. So like space agencies, space companies that are doing launches. I really hope they start doing more shows like this where it's open table. You know, it's an open discussion. It's round table. You're all sitting around kind of just like, you know, chatting about the, the amazingness that goes into a launch, speaking about the technical terms, but also going into, you know, maybe a, a, a rabbit hole or a tangent here and there. That's that's kind of the philosophy that, you know, branched into astronomy. Um, so that's that's what I love so much about a show. But so many times it just comes in through through like through an email and, and it was like super awesome, um, which is why I think it's so important to just remain open and, and constantly just be connected to each other. <laughs> it's wonderful points. And uh, so Raquel, I um, want to go to you uh, for this, a little bit about this platform that you made and what you do and how you share, because there's certain people that kind of share the space stuff and then they share their family stuff. Like Emily Calandrelli has two separate platforms. She's the space mom and she's the space gal. The space gal is much more around, you know, the science communication and her new Netflix show and those things. And then Space Mom's a little bit more of like her and her husband and her baby, and they're just being cute and adorable, but you mix them together. It might be, you guys should go check out this really super awesome science communicator. And then it's the baby and you're like, oh, and uh, it's a cool mix that you mix the two things together. So can you tell us a little bit about um, mixing the two, sharing your personal life at the same time that you're also sharing science communication? Honestly, I'm just not organized enough to have two different <laughs> accounts. <laughs> I actually do have a separate baby account, but um, I, I I stopped posting. It was just for family and friends, and I couldn't even keep that up. So, um, um, but it's I'm I'm a mom and I'm a scientist. Like that is just who I am, and so um, to me, it just feels natural to share both 
both worlds and all the worlds. You know, I there's lots of different things that I that I think I am. You know, I'm I'm not from this country. I'm I'm from Portugal, so I like talking about being from Portugal. And I'm a veteran. I like talking about my experience in the military. So that's all part of who I am. And um, I have no problem with sharing it all just in one platform. But I completely understand people wanting to separate their personal and their uh, professional lives. Um, I just don't do it because I'm not organized enough to do that. <laughs> Well, it's it's not like you have a whole lot of extra time being both. That's you know, true. So. That's that's also true. Um, yeah, there's my time is so taken up by so many things that this is just one thing. It's just one one account that I can post to, and I don't have to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, Alyssa, we'll, we'll go to you. Um, as as great as everybody here does, we are all jealous of your engagement rate. It is like you will post a picture and 60% of the people that follow, you will have 115,000 remarks. This should be like, I passed the test today, you know, and like people love everything that you're doing. And I know that it's, it's really just a lot of work between you and your dad. It's not like you're looking at the numbers. It's not like you're pouring over stuff, not ever sleeping. It must be nice, by the way, because... That's not that's not the way it works for me. But no, it's um. When did you start seeing people really connecting to what it was you were doing? Was there anything special about it, or was it just the snowball kind of that we talked about a little bit earlier? Um. Yeah. You know, I wish I kind of like could remember. I guess a time. I guess where it like blew up or like exploded. I think that there's just been it mainly just like came in waves, kind of just throughout everything that I was doing. So like something would like come out like maybe just like a simple article and there'd be a huge wave of things and then like um you know something else would happen and there'd be another wave of like we just hear a puppy um yeah he's scratching out the door um, <laughs> <laughs> um but basically everything that i did was like a wave of people and it's so crazy because like i remember first starting instagram and having like a hundred followers and like i knew those a hundred followers like by name even though like i didn't know them like personally i knew like oh yeah at whoever like follows me even if they had you know 15 followers i just knew who was following me and so it was just so crazy when things just started coming in like bigger waves and that's where thing as to like what it's built now but I totally agree I really don't understand um some of the engagement stuff sometimes I mean honestly I'm not like a social media guru or anything like that um so for me it was just kind of me posting what I was interested in you know I never really felt like like I didn't want to have to post I didn't want to feel obligated to post on Instagram or like post on social media just in general I just kind of posted when things are happening I never really wanted to like make up a post just to have something so um i guess it's worked pretty much um just kind of been rolling with it it's kind of just like the same platform to me as like when it was those 100 people just posting whatever i'm interested in or whatever's going on just to hopefully um show people what they can do or other things that are out there um, or other opportunities or even inspiring others and i think that's a major point that everybody here has this you know kind of uh, in their bones. And it's with a lot of the best science communicators is that it's the passion and it's the authenticity of it. Um, you know, of course there's going to be the, the magazine covers and the other cool stuff, but it's also the thing that people are just as, um, just as excited when like they heard you graduating or when they heard that, you know, Athena was going to be on this show or that Raquel just had the baby or, um, you know, all the amazing stuff that, that Diana does and so on. Um, that's, that's the real piece of it. Um, find whatever is that authentic piece of you. And if you share that, if you're, if you're willing to share that, and that's not easy, and I'm sure everybody here can talk about that, um, that that's something to kind of uh, pay attention to and make sure that you continue to highlight yourself and what it is and what you're passionate about, and you're going to find kind of your way. Um, so, Karina, I'll go to you next with um, as as you work with these different organizations. Um, you know, what is it that that jumps out about you know the things that you work on, what you put out there, and and how it connects with people, and uh, some maybe some tips and tricks of what some people uh, that are listening can do to kind of get their platform off the ground. You are muted. First step: make sure you're unmuted. Um, but I think the best thing about what I've noticed, even with partnering with people who are not in the space industry is similar to what Athena mentioned earlier, is just that they already have a passion for something. And one of the best things about space is that 
people's passions have a space in space, uh, you can always find whatever people it is, whatever it is that people are doing in the space industry. So sometimes they might not even realize, like, so I, because of the cosplay and the entertainment industry, I have a lot of friends who are actually um, seamstresses. And recently, in, SpaceX opened up a position for an astronaut uh, seamstress. So I was like, hey guys look at this you can you can work in the space industry uh and also working with different organizations is just trying to show people that they do have a space in this industry that they do belong here and trying to figure out how to easily make it easily accessible and make sure that they know that they can have their way in here um and honestly like what everyone has done in this uh, panel is exactly what needs to be done is just sharing their passion um, because ultimately it shows people that they can do it too uh, so for me like i didn't i wasn't i didn't come into industry wanting to be on panels or anything like that i just wanted to work on something that i was passionate about uh, but because i talked about that passion i started to get invited to do these type of stuff and um for me it was just incredible and the main reason why i kept doing it was not so much because of me but because i knew that there's not a lot of people that look like me in this industry so by me being able to just put myself out there even if it was a little bit different or a little bit weird for me it allowed somebody else to see themselves in industry. And I think, you know, I think even with like Athena, there's a lot of the times people think that if you're attractive, you can't be smart. And, you know, you're just proving everyone wrong. You're just telling them, look, I can do both. And just being able to be online and represent who you are actually just really helps everyone be, uh, be able to see themselves in industry. And so just share your passion and, you never know who you're going to reach because they might not have seen themselves until they saw you. I think that's a great point. And I don't know where it came from that you can't be, you know, you can't have a look and you can't also be, <laughs> you can't be smart. You can't be the other one. Hedy Lamar, anybody? Mm -hmm. Like I can't go over the list of things that she was amazing at. Right. I mean, like she's, what? I, I don't know. That doesn't make any sense to me. And in fact, it's something I get all the time. People will be like, Hold, like, and it's this is men and women. And everybody's like, there's some really attractive people in the space industry. Yes, of course there is. Like, no, it's not what you see on TV. Like, there's a mixtures of anything and everybody from all backgrounds of all, of all sexualities, all colors, all creeds. Um, and that's one of the reasons that I really do love space Twitter is you'll see the hashtag of, you know, this is what a scientist looks like. Or, you know, recently we've seen like black and STEM, LGBT and STEM, um, uh, disabled and STEM. And we get all these different voices that we get to see and listen to now. And we're getting to see that it, it, it has always been like that and not what TV and movies showed you. Shock and all, don't trust the TV and movies. Uh, they're <laughs> lying to you. Uh, so yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, Jake will go to you as you're developing a podcast and you start to get it out there and the pieces that, um, that you put out and, uh, what makes it a special thing. One, why did you choose Mars to talk about? Like, it's obvious you've got an interest in pretty much everything space and, you know, for the people that are watching this humans, Mars summit. So what made you decide to go there? <laughs> and then how did you kind of craft and put this thing together? Um, that is, you know, obviously doing pretty well. <laughs> yeah, it's so the <laughs> there's like an inspiring answer to that question and a, a, a less inspiring one. I'll give you both. So the inspiring one is um, I think Mars is just a really it's a compelling place. I mean, if you go back to uh, ancient Mars history, you know, go back three and a half, four billion years maybe Mars didn't look that different from Earth. And then something happened, something changed. And Earth became this lovely, you know, paradise of water and plants and life. And Mars became this cold, arid, red rock. And I think the story of, you know, there's there's almost like a, it's like a drama to it, like what went wrong, right? Um, so I think that's just a really interesting kind of thing to talk about. And so that's why I, I like to cover a lot of, uh, you know, planetary geology and, and geomorphology and geophysics, all these kind of cool things that the way we can measure this planet and understand what's happening there. I think it's just, it's just a fun story. Um, the less inspiring answer is that I didn't see any other Mars podcasts. And so I thought it was a competitive niche that I could get into. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's a little bit, it's a little bit of the, you know, my self passion, a little bit of uh, seeing an opportunity of where I could actually um, do something interesting. So yeah, that's probably the the answer for you. <laughs> well, I mean, at least you were being honest. That's what's important. Uh, so uh, Kenny, some stuff I want to pick your brain about as soon as I call. 
Everybody get your mask. I'm just kidding. I'm fine. Uh, <laughs> Thank God we're virtual. <laughs> I got Kitty though. Kitty's like, I gotta say something in a minute. He's cracked me up. Uh, so Kitty, with your platform, uh, what you've been doing more and more of, and I know this is uh, true with with a lot of you that are on the panel right now, is um, you know standing on stages, talking in front of people. Uh, was it? Were you already doing that when your social media? Uh, platform was taking off or because of that is that one of the reasons or was it just kind of happened simultaneously concurrently whatever so let me let me tell you I'm not gonna give you the long story but um I have a terrible stage fright like I hate talking in front of large groups of people so I really honestly don't know how I um got to start speaking on larger stages um I think it's because of my um you know uh personality of not wanting to back down from a challenge um, so, so, you know, one day, you know, uh, someone said, Hey, I need you to speak to this auditorium full of students. And I was like, sure. Cause their, their, their speaker had backed out. It was a longer story, but short story is their speaker backed out. And I was just like, yeah, sure. And I got up there and it was, it was absolutely amazing. You know, the, um, teacher students came up to me afterwards just with a ton of questions. And I felt like I really, really made a, a great impact doing that. Um, so that's something that. Uh, I kind of I kind of started doing after I developed the platform after I um you know uh, stepped out of that 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 just just being an engineer just kind of going to work every day and thus using my story as a platform to reach others. Um, again, I feel like it's selfish to not uh, reach back or reach forward in some way and encourage, inspire the next generation in, in, in that regard. So, um, to answer your top level question, no, I was terrible at speaking, um, and it, it was a skill that developed. And I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm blessed. I'm happy to have it now, but <laughs> it didn't start like this. <laughs> Uh, and and you're you're doing wonderful, man. Your platform's incredible, and people will always laugh when I tell them that at one point I was terrified of uh, public speaking, and I was terrified of flying. And now I do this all the time. And uh, we did micro G flights. Me, Alyssa, Shauna Pena, who was Dr. Shauna Pena that was on earlier. Um, so to go from I'm talking about the least little bit of this yeah. turbulence, and I'm like freaking out, right? <laughs> Fat guy with a heart attack in the back. Uh, somebody get the doctor. Is a doctor on the plane? Uh, so, you know, going from that to like the parabolas and all the crazy stuff that we do to to test with uh, Project Possum, these uh, incredible suits created by Final Frontier Design, which I know a few of you have probably, uh, Athena, I know for sure has worn one at one point, right? Yeah, because they're located in Brooklyn. Yeah, they're right around the corner. And uh, they're like, in so that's a thing to remember too, that you all have the ability to uh, people that are listening at home that are interested with practice, you'll, you'll find a way, um, you know, mine was vodka. Uh, so that definitely helped with my stage fright for the first few years. Um, I'm not saying you should do that, but I'm just saying, you know, if we're being honest. Uh, so, I, I mean, I think that there's certain things that help. Hey, we do drinks with Explore Mars. If you've never seen it, it's a free show. and We all drink and talk about science with astronauts and stuff. So it's pretty cool. Um, but I think what we have uh, in this is that everybody's kind of found their way. But so what I want to do next is talk about challenges. Um, you know, what was the biggest challenge for you in creating your platform? And, uh, yo, Deanna, I'll go to you first. I mean, it's a current challenge, actually, is staying consistent because um, a lot of us are actually volunteering their time to maintain these platforms. Um, it's probably something that we're doing on the side. This is what I do. Uh, the Arabian Stargazer is just a hobby that I do at night or on a weekend. Um, so it's a really demanding to keep it successful and to keep it going. Um, and especially with social media and how algorithms work um, on Instagram, when you're not posting and when you're not uh, engaging and answering comments and answering emails, you do lose interest. And your main goal is to reach as many people as possible. So staying consistent and uh, and continuing that creativity cycle is something that I that I do struggle on. When I am stressed, I am not thinking of the page. I am trying to meet deadlines. I'm trying to um, to just maintain my job. Uh, so this is just a common it's a common issue that a lot of science communicators face when, especially when they're volunteering their time to to maintain that platform or to um, to help others. It would help if, if I decided to unmute myself. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, Athena, we'll go to you next. What's the biggest challenge for you um, that you had that you had to deal with in the platform, or even the biggest issue that you deal now with now that you have a big platform? Uh, you know, to, to kind of keep it going and keep the motivation up. 
the biggest challenge was the beginning actually starting it because I was using like an iPad mini, which was like from, I don't even know what year. And um, my first YouTube video was on centripetal acceleration. And I just knew I wanted to try and do the demo that my professor did in college. And it just kept failing and failing and failing. And I just thought, why am I even doing this? This is so like silly. And I was like, I should just stick to modeling. Like no one wants to listen to me talk about space, but I just was so passionate about it that I just was like, I don't care if this iPad keeps dying and falling over, I'm gonna make it happen. I'm gonna make it into my first video. And um, that was definitely the biggest challenge was just pushing myself to actually produce the first, I guess the first kind of video. So yeah, that's my answer. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great and wonderful answer. So we appreciate it. Uh, Raquel, is there one for you? Is it, well, you've already said motivation to separate them. So uh, that might be number one. If that's number one, then give us another. <laughs> Yeah, no, it, it, well, not just the separating part of it, but like, um, like I'm sure a lot of, a lot of the other panelists is, is, uh, when life gets, because we do, I do this on the side, this is a, a side gig. It's not my full-time job or anything. And probably not a lot of our, uh, of us here, um, is something like when I was pregnant or in when the pandemic happened and my kids daycare shut down and I was still working on my PhD, I did not have time to post on my social media. Social media was like in the bottom of, of my to-do list. Um, so, and, but then you feel guilty, you know, you were, your friends, I, I'm, I've become friends with a lot of my followers and we chat every day and I would feel guilty about not posting like, Oh my goodness. And then I'm getting messages from people being like, Hey, are you okay? And so, I feel, I feel like I'm accountable to this amazing group of friends that I have on my platform. Um, and then when I can't be there, I feel very guilty about it. So that's, that's the most challenging thing for me is um, sometimes I just cannot post and I cannot be there for, for my followers. And, and then I feel guilty about it. And, uh, you know, they do kind of become your family, especially the ones that are really connected to you. And we'll get to that in, in a minute of the that connection with a person that you met through this and somehow you inspired and then they're doing awesome things and it makes you cry yourself to sleep at night. Like, how did I do this? Um, so uh, we'll definitely talk about that in a minute. But, uh, yeah, Alyssa, let's go to you for this one. What's the uh, what's your your biggest one? You're just, you know, in college and, you know, also running social media stuff and all the other things that you do. No big deal. Super Bowl commercial, homework and wait, yo. Yeah, I mean, totally kind of like what Raquel said. I mean, none of us, um, obviously, kind of all of us have other obligations, and social media isn't like our full time um, gig or anything. And so it's definitely the well, same except thing. Except for me. Um, you know, kind of just in time management. And um, yeah, except for you. But uh, for, um, for the most part, I mean, really, it is just kind of whenever we have time for it. I mean, honestly, social media is a full time gig. If you are running, you know, every social media platform, if you are running a Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, I mean, it's kind of endless now with the amount of platforms that there are. And if you are on all of them, it can definitely get overwhelming um, in just the amount of stuff to go through and actually post and do. Um, so, you know, for me, definitely time management has always been, I guess, in general, just the biggest challenge because of all the stuff that I want to do, as well as keeping track on school and homework and um, just kind of doing everything, having time for Netflix, you know, got to balance everything out. So um, in general, I guess just time management and kind of bringing social media into that same realm of kind of having time for it or either, you know, engaging with followers, responding to direct messages or answering comments or anything like that and trying to balance um, and have time for all that as well, because, you know, it is important to engage and try to yeah. actually do what I'm trying to do, which is inspire people and like teach them and help them in any way that I can, but also having time to, you know, do everything that I actually have to do to reach my own goals at the same time. So it's all just kind of That's a why you wrote a book. Back. I love that. People ask like, what did you do to do this? Buy the book. Like I can only answer this 114 times a day. Did you do a thing? I did a thing. It's in the book. Read the book. Uh, so, you know, that was a really smart move on your part. It's like, I am going to take a bunch of time to write a book because it's going to save me time in the future. <laughs> so, uh, Karina, we'll go to you next. Biggest challenge uh, that you have to deal with, uh, maybe mixing work and you know, planning and all the things that you have to do. And then also, you know, just being a, a, you know, a great science communicator. Uh, the time. Uh, so sometimes you get, especially for me, I get so caught up on trying to make partnerships and make things and in your head, you're thinking about like all the cool things you can post online, but then you actually have to execute them. Um, 
So that's kind of the hardest part. It's like, especially recently with like the partnership we had with Kerbal Space Program, I wanted to get on the game and do all these things and share them, but I had to focus on actually getting the rules for the kids and getting them to uh, submit their things on time and getting and answering all the questions on what they were doing and what they needed to do. And so sometimes it's just kind of hard when you have to execute everything and then realize you have no time to actually post anything. Um, and same with a calendar I recently worked on, which is, uh, I'll use this to plug it too, uh, it's a STEM calendar for the year 2020-2021 uh, for uh, young kids and for teachers to be able to find diverse people in the industry. And it was such a fun project to work with. And as I was finding the people to include in the calendar, I just kept thinking, oh my God, this is so much content. But because I had to do all that content, I didn't have enough time to think, oh, maybe I should make these posts. So it's that execution of partnerships and plans and thinking about everything you can do and then not having the time to actually put it up. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's the things that I forget to do or post. Like, oh, I'm gonna do a thing about the thing, and then I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot about that because eight other things happen. Uh, time management is a nightmare uh, for so so many people here, and uh, I love everybody saying I'm reposting. I know you're reposting. I'm kidding. I see that as soon as you post, I see the notifications on my phone. Of course, I'm kidding. I was giving everybody uh, a little bit of hell there because they were all on their phones, but they were posting, and I knew that they were. But everybody's like, no, I'm not. I'm just reposting. I know you are. I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> So, uh, Jake, other than the nightmare that can be editing and getting things together, uh, is that is that your biggest challenge that you have? Uh, because I know that that can take forever. If you've got a great mic, they don't, and it's all over the place. Somebody was yelling at me and read it uh, the other day because uh, generally my microphone is, you know, and also I have a voice, right? Um, and I interview somebody, and the the volume's off, and it takes too long for me to fix all that stuff, and I just you know get frustrated and put it out there. So, um, you know, in particular, is that something, a big one for you with all this, or is there something else that really kind of stands out? Yeah, well, I mean, you're right. I mean, there's there's a, a lot of work that goes into kind of, you know, behind the scenes on a podcast. And I think the this is, you know, this panel is about social media. And I think that the point that I can make there is that um, I, I find it really challenging to find, uh, to do the right balance between the content that I came here to make. And so that's, you know, these are podcasts, these are longer form uh, streams and, and video productions and all those kinds of things. So I got to put time into building good content, but then you need to use social media as a tool to get people to it. Um, and so, whereas, I, I, you know, a different strategy might be the, the social media is your content and you can do it all kind of at once. And so I find that very, very challenging to be like, okay, well, I've, you know, I've busted my butt and I've made this amazing thing that took me you know 12 hours to put together and then not marketing it properly which is like it's just it's so hard sometimes um i used to have a uh a, I, someone mentioned that you know keeping up all these different platforms i think Alyssa said you know there's there's so many platforms you can get onto and um i, I ran out of time for that so i used to try and do instagram and facebook and twitter and i just like i was not putting my all into it and so i actually ended up cutting a few of those just to to focus and say this is what you know i can i can do a good job and put the the time in there uh, but it's, it's definitely a challenge even on twitter i mean just trying to uh, think of ways to, you know, put something interesting and unique out there that isn't just like retweets and likes and just like engaging really kind of, you know, half ass with it, <laughs> for lack of a better word. So um, that's that's what I really find challenging is just like is the right balance of, of putting the right time into social media where it's adding value and not taking value away. Wow. I mean, that is an excellent point. I mean, how many of us... Uh you know, lose time on social media. I mean, and that's it too. I have to go to social media to put something up. And then I notice that there's 400 things that are going on and then I lose track and I have to go back to the list of things. I'm like, Oh, I was supposed to do that like three things ago. Uh, that's what I, that's where I started chasing rabbits as I call it. Uh, so, you know, I think that's a big one for a lot of people is finding that balance between the two where it's a benefit and it's helping you building your business, building your brand. And then also just being like, Oh my God, cat video is so awesome. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, so I think that's a big one for all of us, right? Uh, so Kenny, we'll go to you next. What's your, uh, what's your biggest one that you have to deal with? Ooh, Ooh you're going to make me, uh, you're going to make me vent. Uh, <laughs> go, so, go for it, man. So, so, so 
I'll, I'll, I'll say that social media is way, way at the bottom of my list of things to do. Um, you know, like you said, I've got a little one on the way. We're at what, 38 weeks right now. So, you know, <laughs> it could happen now. I could run off this camera now and hit the hospital. But, <laughs> you know, that's 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 happening any day now. Um, I'm running for public office. I am a doctoral student. I, uh, you know, work at Goddard. Again, I, I support three missions there. So, you know, once a week we're going into the office to find out something else has slipped to the right. I mean, it's, it's difficult to, it's difficult to, thank you. It's difficult to um, keep up with all these things. But again, it's, it's, I feel like at, at some level, it's kind of my responsibility to, again, put those things out into the atmosphere to say, hey, I'm working on these cool projects. Hey, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm trying to impact you in some way. And then, you know, I've got mentees and X, Y, Z. Uh, so my challenge, again, is time management is really deciding what I'm going to tackle each and every day. Uh, and, and, it changes. It changes every day. It changes every week based on how much homework you have, you know, based on uh, what the office is looking Well, not the office right now, but I guess what my email, what my inbox looks like, uh, and then supporting conferences and things like that and talking to great people like you, like you guys. So it's, it's, it varies, but I'll say time management is probably the biggest thing for me. And, uh, you know, I mean, I appreciate you being honest with it. And uh, so the funny thing was, is that we were actually planning on having a baby shower for Raquel at H2M. Uh, so earlier this year, we, we were going to do like a big thing for it. And then the world ended. So uh, we actually, you know what? And Wade, sorry, I forgot about this. We we uh, we owe you an Explore Mars birthday. I'm uh, not birthday, but uh, baby gift. And we'll send that to you. So message me and tell me what it is you need. And now, Kenny, we got to get you one too, man. So um, maybe I'll just buy the same thing. Or I can send one to Raquel. She can say, I don't need this. And she can re-gift it. You might end up with two things, bro. <laughs> maybe. maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm completely fine with that. Um, so you know, before point. we get to the audience questions, um, there's uh, you know one thing that I, I definitely want to talk about a little bit. And um, it's what's next. You know, you, you've built these big platforms and everything. How do we keep scaling up? I mean, I interviewed Elon Musk today. I have no other than going to space. I don't know how <laughs> I top that after that in this. This is the biggest stream I've ever done. We have almost 700 people watching on the live stream. And then there's the people that are watching in the event. So it's just there's so much going on. And then Elon earlier. And I'm pretty sure we just got confirmation that Bill Nye is coming on tomorrow. Uh, so me and Jen, uh, Jen and Ivy and I are going to interview him together. Um, they just said that we could promote it. So that's the, the first announcement here right around the time that we hit 700 viewers. So, I mean, what do you do once you get to a point like I've got 107,000 followers like Diana does? You know, what do you do? What's the next thing? You know, what is it that that keeps you going? What's the next big goal for you? Yeah, I think if you do start at the mentality that I want to get followers, then maybe you will reach that pretty fast and you realize that your dream wasn't big enough and you need to go scale up and get bigger. So my, my main goal I actually did not know it's it's going to get big. Um, and I do believe that it could get bigger if I can be a little bit more consistent. But my main goal is to utilize social media to kind of um, upscale these resources everywhere around the world. Uh, a lot of us are speaking English and many, many people probably are watching and not understanding what we're saying. I want to have these events in Arabic as well. I want to have the skill sets that I have that I learned in an American university in the Middle East as well. I want to shed light on the uh, scientific initiatives that are already happening on the ground in the Middle East, but provide them with more expo exposure. Um, and that will not happen unless we, uh, we utilize social media and show and connect the general public on why should we invest in space and how is it important and how could we have businesses, private companies, the government, universities, middle schools, everyone to participate in making this uh, a reality? Because let's be honest, space is not cheap. It's not easy. It's not something where you can Google how to build a rocket and you know there's a perfect recipe on how to do that. Uh, when I was in the university, I built a cubic satellite with, with NASA um, I participated in building 3D printed rocket engines, and that was all on a university level. I was still, you know, 20, I think, 19, 20, and I couldn't do that on my own. My, my group couldn't do that on, on their own. We needed help from industry professionals, and these industry professionals will not be able to help us unless they saw value and they saw that we have some kind of support and funding from from whatever organizations we were in so my main goal is to 
kind of spread that idea that we do need space and that you could pursue space from anywhere in the world. You don't have to be really good in math. You don't have to speak English for it. You don't have to work at NASA to be to be an astronaut. There's so many different avenues. Oh, and most importantly, you don't even have to be a scientific person. You don't have to be a scientist or an engineer. You can work anything, an artist, photographer, accountant, whatever major you're interested in, you can still be part of the space. As Karina said, you can create space in space. So my main goal is to, is to build that big platform so everyone can see it and everyone can understand it and utilize it in wherever they're from. Uh, you know, a wonderful breakdown there for uh, us of what's next for you. Athena, we'll go to you. Um, you know, TikTok. You now you're the you're the U.S. company that buys TikTok. Uh, what do you do next? I'm just kidding. Uh, no, but but seriously, you know, kind of you're you're killing it right now. Um, you know, how do you continue to to scale up? What's next for you? Uh, what's the what's the big dream? Yeah. Well. Your earlier question, which was what motivates me to keep going or what motivates us to keep going. For me, I feel like the space industry is one of those industries that's ever expanding. And so I feel like every single day I'm in awe all over again when I open my inbox and see emails of like newsletters from science um, like websites that are talking about new discoveries that were made, like a new binary star system that was discovered, they you all know, like orbiting close to a black hole and uh, like, you know, that stuff is just so exciting. And I feel like it'll just never get old. It's just so extraordinary. So there's always stuff to share, I feel. Um, but as I've been evolving, I think just like through my platform, I've gained such a passion in education and in like just the education industry in general, um, just because that's something that, especially right now with COVID, that we're really seeing, you know, students struggling so much, especially like younger students, grade school and high school. And I have a little sister who's 16 and just like seeing how she has to do school now, like half virtually um, and then half in school it's really kind of jolted me and been like, I got to like really start to work harder on what I'm doing because, you know, virtual learning is so prominent now more than ever. And I almost feel like we as science communicators have a very big responsibility to um, bring that to the youth. And on top of that, to start to actually change these like systematic um, things that have been that have been built within our world from the school system. And um, I think that that's something that's really just become such a huge passion of mine. And to branch off of what Diana was saying about um, kind of like, you know, getting eventually a ripple effect into like funding bigger missions and actually speaking to policies and speaking to all like big audiences. Um, what really kind of like woke me up was when I did, um, it was a, like the, the blitz uh, at um, Washington DC through the Planetary Society where you speak to Congress about um, the new NASA bill, so the NASA Transition Authorization Act. So talking about new missions that should be funded. And that really kind of like woke me up of how important it is um, that the general public knows about how much their lives are affected by different scientific missions worldwide, whether it's through ISRO, the Indian Space Agency, JAXA, the Japanese Space Agency, ESA, European Space Agency, NASA, all of those. And I think that the more we can properly educate people, the more we're gonna be able to see a greater advancement and hopefully start to actually, um, you know, see that ripple effect of starting to resolve the world issues that we're facing right now. Um, because that a lot of that comes through these, these ideas or these technologies or the ways that we work together as humanity. And so I, I see that so much just that, that have come through the history of, um, going to space and uh, working in, in the science industry. So I think that that, that alone is, is enough of motivation. But yeah, my, my biggest dream and goal is just to like really start to, to shift the way we do education. Beautiful things. Absolutely beautiful things. So uh, Raquel, what's, I mean, raising children, and, you know, getting your, oh yeah, yeah. So, I mean, that, this is pretty easy. Uh, you know, PhD, I know it's kind of scary and we talked about it the other day. So uh, talk a little bit about, you know, raising kids, getting a PhD and still being a science communicator. <laughs> it's, uh, I like to keep busy, I guess. Um, yeah, it's definitely been challenging. Um, I keep having babies, so my PhD keeps getting delayed and delayed. <laughs> I had a meeting with my advisor a couple of weeks ago. He's like, you gotta get out of here. You gotta... So he wants me to finish by June. So, um, 
So what I'm working on now is trying to figure out what I want to do next. You know, once I do finish my PhD, do I want to go into academia? Do I want to go into research? Do I want to go into science communication? Um, the one thing that I'm, is I went to community college and I started out, I had an internship at NASA, JPL, while at community college. And that was community college teachers and professors were some of the most uh, caring, impactful people um, in my career and where I'm at right now. And I would love to do that, to give back to that to that community. I would love to, to teach a community college um, at some point. Um, but I also really love being involved in NASA missions. So ideally for me in the future, I would like a job where I can teach in community college to give back to, to that uh, community that I was a part of that helped me so much, but also continue doing, working with NASA, sending spacecraft to other worlds and figuring out what's out there. Um, but yes, and uh, while, while raising children, but it's, it's really exciting. You know, the other day, my, um, I asked my son, he's four years old, do, do you want to be a scientist? And, uh, and he's like, no, mommy, I science only girls are scientists because in, 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 in our household, I'm the scientist and, and my husband's the science communicator. So he makes films. So my son said that he wants to make films with daddy. <laughs> because girls, only girls are scientists. And I thought that was really, really interesting. Um, so yeah, it's getting to to experience, you know, my excitement for the world with them is, is actually one of my biggest joys um, in the world. And, uh, you know, your husband absolutely has never made a great video with millions of views before. So I, I wonder why I was like, ah, oh, daddy, that's the coolest thing ever. Uh, so, I mean, I know that's got to be uh, an incredible piece of like putting all those pieces together and uh, what what a wonderful, um, you know, household to grow up in with, you know, a loving family that also has a lot of, you know, talent and uh, and can kind of share that. Um, so, Alyssa, let's go to you next. What's uh, I mean, space, <laughs> Mars. You know, <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I guess, especially for me, you know, I don't necessarily have a job given that I'm still a student and that sort of thing. So, there's a whole lot, I guess, coming up. I guess, just in general, in my lifetime, you know, graduating college would be a pretty big milestone. Actually, getting a job uh, working in the space industry, doing astrobiology, and getting involved in what I'm studying. Um, and so, all of that obviously is super exciting. And with the hopes of going into the space industry and everything that I'm looking forward to getting into, it's also important, you know, that I think um, that I continue to inspire other kids, you know, whether they're my age or younger. You know, it takes tens of thousands of people to send one person into space. And there are just so many incredible roles in the space industry, just in general whether that is the astronauts, the engineers, or the people packaging the food to go up to the actual space station or any other um, role that there is, you know, we have to inspire those kids now to continue supplying um, those jobs to continue sending people to space, going back to the moon, going on to Mars, and all of our future ambitions. So really for me, I guess continuing in my next steps is just continuing through my education um, and all that fun stuff, but really just continuing to get more um, kids, girls, whoever kind of involved in space and wanting to pursue those space careers and I guess also getting younger kids to realize that they can pursue a sort of job in space you know there's there's other opportunities out there that they can look into besides you know I feel like when we're all when we're younger we kind of focus on those typical I guess like doctor lawyer kind of typical jobs that we're told um, where there is you know like psychology that is included within the space program or you know all these kind of out there jobs that there are so many opportunities especially with space because it's constantly evolving so um just having that be known and continuing to see that rise of interest also i guess just in general in social media you know space and nasa being popular again mars becoming popular and all like the tv shows and movies so in general just all the exciting stuff happening with space becoming big again Love it, love it. Karina, get off your phone. It's time for you to answer. All right, that's right. I caught you in the app, girl. <laughs> I got to text my boyfriend. He's amazing. He's on the other side of the world. So tell us uh, what it is that's next for you other than getting back to him someday. <laughs> hey, guess what? You're muted in it again. If you were texting, see, you've been giving me uh, thumbs up and you know that I hate it. In my messages know, all the time. So this is my chance to get you back in front of the world, the 857 people watching right now. <laughs> oh okay just you wait for the rest of the week then um by the way i do behave like ron's like annoying little sister by just bugging him like whenever i can eat um, water. Uh, so outside of that as my goal 
<laughs> but outside of, you know, bugging Ron as my goal, um, one of my biggest goals that I want to do is actually create and foster the uh, workforce for the industry. Uh, we've been having a real it's like struggle with workforce um, and especially when it comes to diverse workforce and we really can't have that as demographics are changing as the future of the country will look different uh, we really need to change our tactics and ensuring that more people will join our industry so i really want to focus on diversifying the workforce and growing that um, especially getting younger people interested uh, and i hope to do that through different like ways of you know kind of using bait things like a video game or uh, science fiction just to get them involved because we really need them and we really need the diversity um, I mean the number of women hasn't really the percentage of women hasn't really changed in the last 30 years So we really 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 need to focus and I think for me one of my goals is to really try to foster that Workforce and to ensure that you know, we do have a future and that when we move forward when we move humanity forward that we actually reflect humanity and that the group that takes us forward reflects everyone so Really, what I want to do is utilize a lot of pop culture and social media to help foster that that future workforce. Wonderful stuff, <clears throat> Jake. We'll go to you next, sir. What's the uh, what's the big thing taking over the world? Uh, <laughs> it with the podcast, is the podcast what does it, or is there uh, is there another another thing, another iron in the fire? I'm sure you're up to something. Uh, yeah, I'm always up to something for sure. But I, I think the 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 top level story is this. I, I just, I want to tell stories. I think that's the most compelling part of this work for me. It's what gets me leaping out of bed. I love, um, you know, I love humanizing what's going on in space. I think there's, um, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot of like enthusiasm around like really technical details around stuff. You know, you can go on Twitter and see um, people just geek out about the, the type of metal being used on the side of a rocket. And they want to talk about that for, for ages. And that's, that's totally me. cool. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's totally cool. And I love that enthusiasm. And, and I, and I think that's a, an awesome thing to be excited about. I'm excited about it too. I definitely engage in some of those conversations, but to me, I just love turning something like that passion into a human story because, you know, at the end of every um, bolt on one of these rockets is, is someone who, who, who turned it with a, with a tool and, you know, they went home to their family and they have a life and there's something really interesting going on behind there. Um, I'm really glad, you know, um, uh, Karina and some others on this panel have brought up the idea of diversity. I think that's a really an important thing, uh, part of the story to tell, uh, you know, and I have to give props to Explore Mars. They've done a really good job of, of putting a lot of effort into um, uh, having good representation this panel. I'm just, I'm delighted and actually a little bit surprised. I'm the only white guy on this panel. And I think that's just like amazing that we're able to get some different voices and put those forward. I, I try really hard to share some of those stories through the podcast and, and put some different perspectives and voices. And I want to keep chasing that because um, I can always be better. I, you know, there's, that's not a job that you finish doing, um, you know, trying to diversify that kind of stuff. So um, I think that's what's really in the future. I think that's, uh, it's going to fill up my time plenty to do. So um, that's where I'm really going after. Love it. And, uh, you know, so that's been an interesting conversation throughout this little spring of people talking about diversifying and doing all this stuff. I'm like, you need to go to more conferences. You're not meeting enough people. Like everybody I, here I met, I didn't meet any of you really on social media other than Jake, a friend recommended the show to me. And then Kenny, like a week ago, uh, everybody else uh, I've met at different events or on panels with them. And you just, the space industry and the conferences are just filled with diversity and you just never know when you're going to meet the next person. So for me to go through and be like, I'm going to pick five random people for a show. Like it just, I didn't really think about it too much. Um, but it just, I go back and look through it and it's awesome that there is that much diversity in the space industry already. It's going to be difficult for you to continue to do all white male panels, space industry. Um, so it's one of those things, you know, to continue to, uh, to work hard on it. And, uh, and I think it's a really cool thing. So, uh, Kenny, I saw you laughing there, <laughs> but we'll go to you next. Um, so that's, that's, that's kind of a tough question for me. Um, within my own personal goals, I'd say uh, I want to just continue to work on these different missions I've been working on. I really want to kind of make that shift to more more manned mission, more of the, uh, as, as everyone might know, Goddard is really more of like a science center, research center. So I've done a lot of stuff with hands-on integration and things like that, but I really do want to get more into those uh, manned missions and things like that. Um, I, know, I know it's a lot of people's goal or dream of, uh, you know, working at NASA and hopefully one day becoming an astronaut at some, some point. That's kind of on my trajectory. It's not like 
you know, go A, but it's 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 along there somewhere. Uh, but really at the bottom line, I really just hope to to influence and inspire the next generation. Um, you know, I'm I'm going last, but I gotta I gotta bring up the diversity con concept as well. Um, you know, we need 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 to to push the envelope on that. You know, me growing up, I didn't have a ton of people that look like me um, in really high positions in in the STEM field. Um, and so I, you know, as I was developing my platform, I thought I need to be that person. I need to, you know, try to be that influencer and be, you know, just that voice within STEM. Um, so, you know, my goals hopefully, hopefully are to impact the next generation. And, and, and that's why I do the things I do every day. Kenny, you're, uh, you're getting yelled at for saying manned missions and not crewed missions. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. See, he's like, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. <laughs> like, I'm I didn't mean sorry, to. Guys. My bad. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I got a baby on the way. I'm not sleeping. I'm sorry. I'm but, uh, sorry. It, <laughs> this is one of those things where we keep ourselves honest, right? You know, yeah, it's yeah, something yeah. that yeah. I have had to catch myself before. Um, or, you know, learning the pronouns of my yeah. friends and making sure that I get that right in my head. It still takes me a minute to do that. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a lot of these things that we're all still learning. And we're all still growing. And the best part was he's like, I don't care. He was like, you're right. I did. I was I, like, you're right. I my can, bad. I, I can accept when I'm wrong. I can accept when I'm wrong. I apologize. I'm saying the, the, the work is never done, right? It's you got exactly it. right. Exactly. <laughs> so we're gonna do um, one more question here uh, to wrap up before we go to everybody for their final thoughts and where we find social media. And this is from Jupiter Jones. Uh, she says, "Question for everyone: How can we, as science communicators and your audience, help advance the cause, science education, and the industry of science communication?" Uh, so we'll go to you first um, to uh, Diana. Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, I believe everybody on here is bringing a unique perspective from their specific viewpoint. Like I'm a propulsion engineer and I work on building the rocket and getting inside the lock things and just getting my hands dirty. But not everyone here is a propulsion engineer. So in order to use science communication and expand it, use that unique voice and use that unique viewpoint from your own experience. If you're not in the space industry yet and you don't know what you want to be doing, learn from the other science communicators, the different options, the different career options that you have um, and, and, and give it a shot. Apply to fellowships, apply to scholarships, apply to jobs and see what you, what you like. Uh, I definitely didn't like my very first job, my very first internships. It, it took me five other internships to, to get to propulsion. So in order to expand science communication, Find what you like, and if you know already what you like, use that viewpoint and uh, express it in a unique way with your unique voice. Love it, love it. Athena, we'll go to you next. Okay, I would say um, I, I'm a big people connector. I love connecting to others, and finding community has been such an important aspect of science communication. So I would just say, like, really just be open to like speaking with different people. Um, I know right now, like, you know, we're not out in public as much, but um, even when I would like be in an airport, I would randomly get into a conversation with someone like next to me on the plane about like space travel. And that in itself is a form of communication. I think that talking about science, talking about space can be as common as like having a cup of coffee. That's actually why I started a, a YouTube series that I have called Ash Cafe Astro Athens. But I think that that really speaks to, um, you know, what science communication is all about and speaking to others and opening that conversation. So I would say to really continue that, that ripple effect is just talk to, talk to other people, um, talk to those that are in the industry or just talk to your friends about a new discovery that you found out and, um, and just connect with others, like events like this. There's so many different events and, um, you know, go on Twitter and you see all the people that retweeted and then follow them. And all of a sudden it's like this, this never ending, um, I think, level of connectivity uh, in space. So that's what I would say. Space Twitter. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. I am. Uh, Karina, we'll go to you next. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think one of the big things is also being open to ideas. Uh, one of the biggest things about science is that it constantly changes as new information comes in. So being able to be open to ideas and to sh be, uh, talk to others about uh, talking about the concept that, of science, that it does change as you get new information. And so being open about that and communicating that and having that concept. And like Athena said, just being able to also talk to others and talk to your immediate network because and sometimes they'll just realize that you'll know these things and you'll become a science communicator for them. You'll tell them, they'll come to you and just say, hey, have you heard anything new? Since you always have insert 
uh, topic here, news. Uh, but always, always, always uh, be aware that science changes according to like the new information that comes in. So always have that in mind and be open-minded and try to get you know the people around you to also be open-minded. Perfect. I give that a million thumbs oh up. God, Alyssa, man. we'll go to you next. <laughs> yeah, you know, I do think that it is important, you know, as science communicators, we continue teaching and sharing everything that we know, especially being, I guess, kind of involved in the industry. You know, I know that several points kind of along in my life, I've kind of seen that gap or disassociation between what's actually going on in the space and science industry versus what the general public kind of has like an understanding of like what's going on. So I know like a good example for me, you know, when the shuttle program ended, you know, I had so many people coming to me, whether it was um, in public or even family members, you know, what is Alyssa going to do now that there aren't astronauts anymore, now that the space program is finished. And I think that, you know, even though obviously the space program didn't just up and close, there was still a lot more going on. The general public had that idea. And so I think that having space communicators and science communi communicators is so important because we are kind of bridging that gap and we're bringing more people into the network. And and having them really realize what's going on and all the amazing things and the amazing people who are involved in that industry. So um, I think just kind of in general, as space and science communicators, we just have to continue bridging that, that gap between, um, I guess, people who are directly involved in that industry and then just the general public, because um, I definitely believe that in general with what's going on in space, we need that public interest to kind of back us and support us and, you know, be there rooting us on no matter what it's doing, whether it's whether it's an experiment, whether it's something as big as going to Mars, whatever it may be, but having that interest in, is so important. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. Jake, we're gonna go to you next, man. Yeah, well, I gotta say, it's getting hard to uh, answer these questions thoughtfully after all these great people have already taken a swing at it. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, so I, maybe I'll just echo a couple of things that, that some of them have said. Um, sometimes I think there's a little bit of a, a uh, like a mystique around science communicators as if there's some sort of upper upper echelon of people but there's no there's no line where you aren't and then are one uh the second you tell someone something interesting about science you're a science communicator and maybe you know some of us are part-time some of us are more part-time than others that's just really a different velocity of the same thing right and so um don't be afraid to to take on that role uh, every time someone talks to you about a, a topic that's you know STEM related that you're interested and passionate about, that's an opportunity for you to do science communication. And every little bit uh, uh, puts a little bit of good into the world. And that's really the most important thing. You have to meet people where they are. And so, you know, that's kind of a skill that you build over time when when someone who's not normally connected isn't living and breathing this stuff every day. Um, when they come up to you with a question, uh, you have to kind of suss out like you know where are they in their journey on on understanding this and you can you can really tailor that message to them and sometimes they don't need to know everything they need just that you know help to take the next step you give them a little bit they take that next step they'll come back to you if they want more and then you can keep going with it right so sometimes that's for passionate people like us it can be like really like oh i'm gonna i'm gonna tell you everything i know about this because you're interested and you just gotta blah, you know vomit a bunch of information onto them that's not really the best way to go but uh so just you know meet people where they are uh, and take that uh, opportunity to just do a little bit of communication because now you are a science communicator and you are, are doing good work wonderful raquel yeah i think um something that we can do to, to help advance the cause of science communication is um i always i keep coming back to empathy it is so important and i think jake just uh touched a little bit on this is trying to understand where your audience is at you know don't talk at them you know have a conversation with with your audience try to understand what where it is that they're coming from, like try to find the thing that excites them and and, and hang on to that um, in everyday conversations like Athena had, but even through your social media channels, people will tell you, oh, that, that's, the real, that's something really exciting and then lean into that. Um, and, and I think the power in this is that you're going to have an, an educated uh, public who will then vote on issues later on that will advance the science industry itself. Um, so yeah, I think empathy, uh, coming at it from understanding where your audience is and, and what they want and giving them that. And um, that, that, is, that is what I think can be the most powerful thing that you can do. 
Love it. And uh, Kenny, we'll go to you next, sir. Um, so I'll make it, I'll make it quick. Um, <clears throat> I'd say that the best way to do this is to tell your story. Your, your story is unique to you. You never know how it's going to um, connect or resonate with someone else. And it could potentially send them down a path toward where they, you know, do something great in STEM, where, where maybe they're the next administrator at NASA, or maybe they're on these next um, crude, crude missions. Um, so, so you never, you never really know what, um, what, what you could say to someone that could impact them in some way and keep them going, you know, like for whatever reason, maybe they have a connection between you, you guys have a connection over fitness. I'll bring up, you know, Kevin, for example, a lot of us know Kevin and a lot of us know he was on, you know, Ninja Warrior, for example. So, you know, a lot of people might talk about fitness or you, you can talk about like, um, Kayla Robinson, who is, who ties music and art into, uh, STEM and different things like that. And like I said, some early to you. Wait a second. Who's Kevin DeBruin? (laughs) <laughs> we don't really know. We don't know him too much. We don't know do we? who you are, Kevin J. DeBrew and Fit Rocket Scientist. Yeah. We definitely know. We definitely know him. Like I said, in some way, I mean, and me and Kevin, you know, met over social media and it was just, you know, a connection that we had and we we, we still talk to this day. So it's kind of like, you know, you never know what the connection is going to be. So tell your own story. You never know how it's going to impact someone else. That's what I'd say. And I did want to back up because I didn't uh, interrupt you talking about Kayla, who I love and who was actually one of our first choices for a panel. And mm-hmm. uh, she was busy. So I don't want to interrupt while you're talking about how awesome she is. So finish that yeah. because I apologize. But I just had to do the plug for Kev. Oh, no, that's fine. Like I said, Kayla Robinson, she ties a lot of um, her art, her music. She plays um, guitar, I believe. Um, and she ties that into STEM a lot. So, you know, we're, we're the, ne- the, the, the industry small. Like I said to you yesterday, Ron, it's, it's, it's surprising how many people know each other once you just bring up one person in it and we're all connected. So I say, tell your own individual story and it'll, you, it'll take you far. So what we're going to do is we're going to go around the horn one last time. Let everybody say any final thoughts of something they want to share. Give us all your social media information. So that way people can follow you. Uh, and then we're going to take a screenshot and then it's going to take us three hours to be able to tag everybody in here, except for Karina. I'm actually going to change her name right now to. Uh, <laughs> My bratty little sister. There we go. Now her name's correct. (laughs) That was awesome, Karina. It really was. Uh, So, uh, (laughs) Diana, we'll go to you first. Uh, Give us uh, a quick breakdown (laughs) of uh, anything, any last thoughts that you have and where we can find you on social. Yeah, definitely. Um, Well, one last thought is not everybody is going to see the potential in you and if you're if you're a young student right now watching and you're trying to find an internship you're trying to find a job after college in in the midst of a pandemic it is very difficult to um to get yourself situated in this industry but it also can be very easy it just don't lose hope when somebody doesn't see a potential in you or when there is um some some difficulty or some challenge uh throughout your career. I definitely experienced it. My very first internship at Northrop, um, I went to an event my very first quarter in UCSD and the recruiter looked at my resume and she said, you don't seem passionate enough about aerospace. I can't offer you an internship. I was very devastated. The next day I went to the same event and I met someone else who saw potential in me, took my resume, wrote my, my name and phone number, and I got an internship that summer. And that was my very first internship. So don't lose hope, um, but there is potential in you. Just keep trying and stay persistent and stay consistent. Um, you can find me on the Arabian Stargazer across across uh, social media, um, the arabianstargazer.com, the Arabian Stargazer on Instagram, and my name, Diana L. Cindy on Twitter. I would love to continue the conversation. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Ron, for having me. This was really, really fun. Um, I'm happy to be here. Uh, you were wonderful. We were so glad to have you and, uh, we'll do a final goodbye here in just a minute. Athena, we'll go to you. Tell us your final words with your new haircut and your red jacket and your shiny lights and, uh, where people can find you on social. (laughs) Um, I guess a final thought would be, um, I think it's so important to have a form of like a mentor, even if it's like a best friend of yours. Um, I mean, just having someone who's like a a big support in your life is so important. Um, A professor of mine from college ended up being my mentor, even like through modeling, which is so crazy. And um, having that there is just so important, especially in, um, I mean, clearly in the science industry, it's really important having someone who has the expertise of what you aspire to have in the future. Um, So I think like looking for that is, is, 
really awesome. And that ties in with having community. So um, that's why I love social media so much and, uh, you know, really lifting up the voice for space science through social media because community is just so important. Um, so that would be my final thought. And um, my name is Ash, well, my name is Athena Brensberger, mm -hmm. but <laughs> my handle is Ash Athens. Um, that's like on all the platforms, even ashtorathens.com. I just started a transmission that I send out once a month, history it's spa in space and like what you could see around the world. And then some of my favorite star apps and some other really cool features that are coming soon that I've been working on on my website that I'll be airing soon. Wonderful, wonderful. Karina, we'll go to you next. Yes, and I hope you oh, like the name it. change. Oh, she did it. Her charm. <laughs> um, and I hope you like the name change. Um, but thanks for all the thumbs up. Um, so my last words, I think, would be to just not give up on, on something if you're passionate about it. Uh, I definitely was not, I did not think I was going to be in the industry. I didn't even think I would even do anything that I do now. Um, and when I applied to a couple fellowships, like I didn't get in, and yet I met the person who introduced me to my current boss through those interview processes. Uh, so just don't give up on things that you actually really care about. Uh, you never know where where the entry point is gonna come. You never know where it is if you keep up. So just keep going, keep going, and just keep talking to people and talk, keep talking to people about how passionate you are about the subject. Um, and trust me, things will eventually work out. So just keep at it. Uh, and uh, yeah, just play Don't Stop Believing in the background the whole time. <laughs> um, are we going to, are we going to sing? Is, is that what we're doing? I can find it on YouTube and we can be like, ah. uh, <laughs> So science communicators, not singers. <laughs> I mean, well, that's definitely better than you. <laughs> <laughs> Alyssa, um, we'll go to you next. Yeah, you know, I think for my final thoughts and all, I think a biggest thing that I can really tell everyone who's watching is really just um, once you find something that you're interested in, whether it is related to science or space or whatever else you may be interested in, it's so important to actually talk about your dreams and talk about your goals and actually tell people what you're interested in doing because you never really know where any opportunities are going to come from or what they can actually lead to. You know, you can tell someone that you're interested in space and they know someone who knows someone who knows someone who works at NASA or any sort of connection. So you never really know where those kinds of situations can lead. So really always be open to telling people about your dreams and about your goals because they can't help you if they don't know about it. So continue to talk about whatever it is you're passionate about. Don't be afraid to share that um, because it can really lead to some great opportunities. You know, there's always um, things that you can get involved with, even, you know, when you're young and in middle school, high school, let's say you want to do robotics in space and you go to a robotic competition in high school, you know, tell someone that you're interested in space robotics specifically, you know, someone may have a connection that can let you learn more about it. So really just don't really be afraid to share your passion and your own goals and then um, I guess to finish it all out, all of my social and stuff um, is under NASA Blueberry. Um, that's kind of across uh, everything. Sometimes there's a one thrown in there, but for the most part, NASA Blueberry. But yeah, thank you guys for having it me. It was awesome. Jake, we'll go to you next, Broski. Uh, yeah, so I, I think the, one of the big takeaways from this panel for me is that uh, there's no wrong way to use social media. I'm just kind of really interested in all the different ways that these panelists have have found to to use social media as a way of outreach, and so um, maybe the lesson there is do whatever you want on social media because there's no rules and it's it's what you want it to be, right? It's what you want it to make out of it. So uh, so keep doing that, everybody. Um, I would be delighted for you to listen to my podcasts. Uh, you can find We Martians on any podcast player. One word: We Martians. Um, and then uh, you know you can follow me on Twitter uh, right there, and you'll get all that kind of content uh, retweeted as well. So I uh, hope to see you around. Awesome, awesome, and uh, we will go to you uh, next, Raquel. Yeah, I'm. Um, I'm really excited. I feel like in the past few years, um, there has been this uh, flourish of science communicators, and I think it's a it's a really exciting um, field to be in. And if you want to be a science communicator, but you feel like you don't have the experience, or you're not a scientist, or um, like you didn't do well in school. Um, I think that you can, you can, you can, you belong in science. You belong in science communication, as you can see from this panel. People have such different backgrounds, um, and that's 
I hope that that you would just try. If that's something that you want to do, you want to talk about science and you want to talk about your excitement about space, but you're scared, just do it. D just start, and you will you will figure it out along the way. And um, and you, my social media stuff, yes. So I'm the space geologist on on Instagram and um, on Twitter. I'm Raquel Nuno, and you can go to RaquelNuno.com for my website. Thank you so much for having me. This was such an honor. <clears throat> I definitely think I've been calling you Nuno for a while, and it was Nuno. And now that I know, I feel pretty terrible about that. I've been calling Bobak for Dowsey, Bobak for Dowski for like six years, and I finally figured it out the other day. So sorry about that, Bobak. My bad. Uh, so we're going to go to you next, Kitty, to, to wrap us up. Your turn, man. Uh, my turn. Um, so, so, yeah. So, so, um. The message that I would leave for, for each and every one of you today is that um, this is a very challenging field. There's there everyone on this panel, or pretty everyone that you speak to in the in STEM, STEAM, academia, anything like that, you're going to hear a story of a challenge that they have uh, overcome. Um, each of us has a unique story, a, a unique challenge uh, that they've overcome, and that 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 I can I can say for myself, I'm happy that I overcome that challenge or overcame that challenge. Um, so my encouragement to you would be to keep going. Seek out a mentor. Someone has been where you're trying to go. Uh, you know, seek seek their advice, seek their wisdom as you go throughout each and every step of this journey. Um, but most importantly, uh, more than anything, I want you to pay it forward. Give it back in some way. You don't have to be a science communicator. You don't have to be a mentor to a hundred people. You don't have to have a hundred thousand followers on any of your social media platforms. Um, but I do encourage you to touch someone else's life, um, you know, touch their career, encourage them and, and push them forward to be uh, the next generation of explorers, anything like that. Uh, so my social media is Kenny F. Harris right there at the bottom, point the wrong side, right here at the bottom. Kenny F. Harris, um, in, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, anything like that. You can find me on there. Uh, but thank you so much for having me. Thank you for hearing us tonight. And it's been a pleasure speaking with you all. Godspeed. Um, I can't thank everybody here enough except for Ron Sound because that totally uh, gave me an echo there a minute ago. I apologize. What uh, nobody may know is that there's after all this day today, finally, for some reason, my microphone wouldn't work with my headphones and I don't know why. So I've been listening to it through my phone on those headphones and it's just been a weird thing. So right at the end, of course, something had to go wrong because, you know, it's one of those days. Um, I can't thank everybody enough uh, for being on here. At one point outside of the summit, we had 900 people watching across all the different social media platforms. Um, that is by far the biggest stream that I have ever done. And uh, it's because of all the people here that said uh, yes, uh, that you would come on and talk about the very cool things that you were up to. I appreciate each and every one of you. I'm proud to call you friends. Thank you for joining us uh, on the summit tonight. And uh, for everybody, this is the end of day one. Just day one. We've got three more days. Uh, there's going to be some really cool stuff happening. Stick around with us. Um, there's going to be, uh, we're going to get more in depth throughout the week about what it's going to take to get humans to Mars, to get them to survive, and what the other major organizations are doing. So I can't thank you enough for uh, for coming on and joining us today. It's been an incredible day. Um, so yeah, we're uh, we're going to wrap up with uh, the, the obvious choice, which is uh, don't stop believing. Just, yeah. just for a few seconds, so that way we don't get sued. We but we've it? got to do it, right? We've we got to do it. it. <laughs> we're gonna oh. sing. Yes. We're gonna, we're gonna get a YouTube takedown now. We're gonna get a YouTube takedown. I feel like I need to record this. <laughs> okay, that's enough. I don't want to get, I don't want to get us in trouble, and then they take this down. So, thank you so much for joining us. We're gonna see y'all bright and early in the morning, and we're gonna go late tomorrow night. <laughs> I saw the plant. I forgot about that. We all got to do the. Uh, I don't have a plant in here, and I can't go get one. So I'll put my, Mova, my I'll put my Van Gogh Mova glove. It's the closest thing I have. So we, we all have plans. We got yeah, the <laughs> <laughs> But somebody now somebody's got to take the screenshot and send it to us. So everybody okay. smile in three, two, one. And somebody send me yeah. that. Tag us all on social media. Uh, we're yeah. definitely going to do that too. And uh, watch, we're all going to have a million comments in the morning because now it's we're the plant group apparently. So thank you all so much for I watching. We will see you all uh, tomorrow on day two. Good night. Bye. Bye, Bye, I want to go eat for the first time Later. before I am. Boom. <laughs> you bet. <laughs>